everybody, here we are at the site where the Salem Witch Trials occurred, the notorious ones in 1692. Now apparently what happened was way back in the 1600s, the Puritans were very, very strict lures. I mean, you weren't, if you're a young girl, you were not allowed to go partying with the guys, you were not allowed to go playing or doing all kinds of fun stuff like that. You had to actually stay at home and you know, work and be like a servant. So a lot of them had a little bit of issue with this. So when at one point there was the reverend, his name was Samuel Paris. Now he owned property in Barbados. He brought one of his slaves back from Barbados named Tituba. And when she came over there, she practiced voodoo and she told his daughter Betty Ferris and his niece Abigail Williams some stories about voodoo and they got all excited about this thinking Puritans they haven't heard this before so after they heard all these stories they started exhibiting some strange behavior such as being in trance all the time and throwing things like firewood around and so other young Puritans heard all this and they got all excited so they started displaying the same kind of behavior so the, the parents of those two there started thinking hmm something's not right so they took them to the doctor Dr. William Griggs and he examined them and concluded that there was nothing medically wrong with them. He concluded there had to be something about witches that was wrong with them. They were bewitched. So this, at the same time, coincided with a lot of land disputes going on at the time. Because at the time, there was no real government here. You all decided to ask for the congregation. So when people were started doing things like point finger, people saying, oh, a land dispute's there. So what we're going to do is we're going to say these guys are involved in witchcraft, so they get them in trouble. And things just got out of hand. Friends were turning on each other, and husbands were actually turning against their wives. Things got really badly out of hand. Now 150 were brought to trial, 19 were hanged, one was pressed, two dogs were actually hanged, believe it or not, and three died in prison. Now the one that was pressed, his name was Giles Corey. Now what happened was he was a wealthy landowner and he refused to confess. So what they did was they put a bunch of boulders on him and until he confessed, they would not take him off. And at the very end, he said, no, I'm not gonna confess. And when all the boulders were on top of him, he eventually died because his chest cavity gave out on him. They were trying to get him to confess and it failed. So if you confessed in those days, they might have gone easy on you, they may not have, but you were still taken to trial. And if you did not confess, you were taken to trial, chances are something bad would happen. Now I should also mention that at one point in late 1692, they saw this one woman in Boston they thought was involved in witchcraft, so they, they arrested her, but it turned out she happened to be the wife of the current governor. And of course he had a problem with this, and he enlisted some of the people know, including John Corwin, who lives in what is now the Witch House, and he actually was one of the judges who presided over the trials, and they all got together and concluded that this arresting people and taking people to trial on this spectral behavior, which was based on this behavior of hallucinating and whatnot, was no longer acceptable. So those who were already executed, it was too late for them, but those who were not, well, eventually they were freed in 1693. Okay, so now, here's the ruins right here. It goes all around here. Mm. Now you can see all these little steps or stones here. Each one is to the 20 victims who were either killed or hanged. So yes, 19 and of course the one that was hanged, the unfortunate Giles Gordy. Okay, so this is the spot where the trials took place. There you go.